Fine with us this morning, Indiana County Chamber of Commerce President Mark Hilliard. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Mark, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today as we talk oh, business, business turnaround, and hopes and dreams for 2021 and our first chance to visit with you in the new year. So let's talk a little bit. Um, Paycheck Protection Program uh, is a big deal. Uh, more information coming out about that um, last week and uh, and uh, later this week going to have the Western Pennsylvania District Chair Director for uh, the Small Business Administration on the air with us to talk about it. Paycheck Protection Program uh, saved a lot of folks last year, didn't it? Yeah, it's nice that we're having the next round of it. Uh, coming available and um you know people who are going through that process and and you know getting who had gotten the applications in and uh you know most of which had those loans forgiven and it uh was something that was kind of nice because it was able to be used for you know payroll or, or rent and things like that it, it was something that we had been getting a lot of calls about even before they announced it that if there's going to be anything else coming um it's not in way of a grant. I'm sorry, but in a way of a loan, but be something that would be more like a grant, which this this kind of is. So mm-hmm. um, it's nice that we have another round of it coming out here for everybody. And you know, as soon, every time we get more information, we try to put that out there as as does I know the Center for Economic Operation. So just kind of keep an eye out for everything for the businesses. We're gonna get more information on how to apply here very shortly. In fact, there's a, a webinar weekly series going on uh, with that and other issues of business uh, in mind, is there not? Yes, I believe those are um, once a week here through mid-February, and um, we encourage people to jump on that. I, we, we, My office sat in on it ourselves um, just to be able to keep up to date on things, but it's good because they do have different representatives on that webinar, um, you know, from the SBA or uh, for other organizations that might be involved with trying to walk you through that process, making it as easy as possible for your business. So, uh, if you if you need a link for that one, you can contact our office. And if you're one of our email so the folks are on, on our email list, you know, we send that out there. But we do plan on uh, also sending that webinar information out um, later this week here through Facebook. And I also want to give a shout out to the SBDC over at IEP. Uh, they're the ones who are helping put this on and making it free for everybody to be able to tune into it and, and have multiple opportunities, like I said, through mid-February to be able to jump on one of those webinars. Yeah. Well, with the uh, Indiana County Chamber of Commerce, I know that uh, uh, you look back on 2020, and uh, there are certainly a lot of things to cover there for you and review, but um, it, it's more important to look forward now to what is coming in 2021. So what are some of the uh, highlights uh, that are on your agenda for the next couple of months? Well, I mean, it, it's first of all, just trying to navigate through these next couple of months and, and hoping that we don't have any uh, any other hiccups that we have to try to, uh, to, to deal with. But um, it, it's certainly a more, I hate to say a more optimistic outlook, because last year at this time, we were very optimistic about the way the year was going to be. And, and um, you know, come mid-March, we that that took a, a sharp left turn but we um, you know we, we are more optimistic and certainly think that uh you know with the, the announcement of the vaccine and that eventually that is going to be something that is going to be out there more readily available for everyone and and um, once that happens i think uh you're going to start seeing more and more things getting back to uh to normal from a business standpoint and we do have a lot of positive things that are going on a lot of things that we're working on it was nice to hear about Dunham Sports coming to Indiana Mall, um, but there are a lot of other things that are in the works. So it's we have a really good feeling about this year. We have and and about the you know the economic development and some of the uh, the things business related that could happen this year. It's just a matter of making sure that uh, you know we keep heading in that direction and and we don't uh, have to take any step more steps back. But you know we we have no idea. Uh, as most people don't, uh, you know, just what's going to happen here over the next couple of months. So we're just kind of keeping our fingers crossed and hoping, uh, you know, we can keep moving forward. The various retail sectors, uh, including restaurants, um, obviously those folks are very, very much affected by this, but everybody is. 
Uh, when we think about them, though, those who operate stores and restaurants uh, and, and those sorts of consumer businesses, one of the interesting things to me about the vaccine coming is uh, there will be the temptation for folks to whip off the mask. I got my shot. I'm going to whip off the mask and start going around. And if, if that is the case, if people are going to do that, it's going to be awfully difficult for somebody who is operating a store or a restaurant to say, okay, this person uh, isn't wearing a mask and they have a shot, or this person isn't wearing a mask and they do. Uh, from the business owner's standpoint, there's not much they can do in those cases, is there? No. I mean, when we've dealt with that a little bit throughout the course of this year, um, you know, there are certain things you're not permitted to do, but I, I'm, I'm very sure that they're still going to have certain regulations in place, um, at least for the short term. Uh, even after the vaccine becomes available, you know, I, I don't expect it to just simply be like flicking a light switch and, and it's it's back to normal 100%. I think that especially for some of those businesses um, and the way things have gone in Pennsylvania in particular, I think that it's, it's likely going to be that there will be some measure of other, you know, safety regulations in place, at least for a, a shorter term, if, it, if even if it's something along the lines of, um, what we did back in, in May and June with the kind of a yellow and green phase. Um, so I do expect something to be in place for those business owners to be able to say, look, this is what the state that, that says we have to do to kind of protect them from having to um, ask those questions. Do you have a vaccine or did you, know, did you not get a vaccine? Because, you know, you can't ask for proof or something like that. But So I, I think that there'll be some kind of uh, plan there in place for, for business owners. It's just a matter of... Uh, exactly how strict they're going to be with everything. Do you get questions at the Chamber of Commerce from business owners about um, any of those issues, about how they can operate their business, where this uh, PPE is available to them, uh, and, and and about the vaccine schedule? Are those questions coming your way, Chair? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, we, we, we've got a lot of questions um, from restaurant owners right now about the priority list for the vaccine and in terms of their their employees because um, as the Department of Health sent out their phases and, and restaurant owners or, or restaurant employees were higher up in the general population in terms of priority lists but in terms of how to get on that list and how to get you know when those vaccines are coming and when we're moving from you know phase 1a to 1b um, you know nobody knows that right now the hospital doesn't know that we're, we're still trying to get through all the uh, the first responders and and the healthcare employees and those folks in 1A uh, before anything else happens. But yeah, we get a lot of questions related to the vaccine. About we've had a lot of questions from business owners. How do I handle this situation or that situation? Um, you know, with most of those, Todd, you know, there there is no right or wrong answer. I mean, it's not black and white. Unfortunately, we, we try to guide them to use their best judgment in most cases. Um, but but so many of these instances, it's 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 not an easy solution, especially when they're asking questions about things like the, you know, like we, we had just talked about, um, you know, there's no, uh, you know, correct answer to, to, to say, well, do this or do that, because there's a lot of gray area there, unfortunately. Yeah. A lot of folks are asking questions about um, the, the business of attracting business to Indiana County. Uh, of course, that is a topic for non-pandemic times as well. And uh, that's a little bit of what you're all about at uh, at the Indiana County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, of course, everything becomes channeled or filtered through the pandemic. Uh, but uh, are you hearing good things about the possibility of uh, um, industry coming or some other type of business that is going to fill up uh, some of the, the vacant and, and more attractive sites around Indiana County? Yeah, well, like, like I said before, we, we there have been some things that have been working on that, uh, you know, we're, we're very encouraged about. I mean, some of it was announced prior to uh, the start of the new year with, uh, you know, Iotech being purchased, New Village Initiative, and, and, and there's a couple of other projects that are, are nearing uh, the point where we can start making announcements on them. But, yeah, surprisingly, you know, we, we still have a lot of uh, irons in the fire. It, it, it wasn't as if things just completely dried up and um, everything that we were working on last year at this time just went away. Um, you know, some of that went away. Some new things came on board. Um, you know, I know people love to hear the retail stories and the Dunham Sports, and they, we always get asked about places like that. But um, there's a lot of different industries that are looking to make Indiana County their home. We're, we're looking at some 
some opportunities here that uh, you know could create some jobs as well. Maybe not to the level of Urban Outfitters at, at this point, at least. Um, but there are, are, are plenty of, uh, of things in the works that you know could be really good uh, fits for our county, and I think could be some good steps to kind of getting back on track here and hopefully getting some more jobs in the area and you know keeping things moving. I think there's some pretty exciting news having to do with education and particularly ICTC and uh, the various initiatives underway to uh, even muscle up some of their services and uh, and some of the associated services. Uh, on the educational front, Indiana County is looking pretty strong. Yeah, I, I think with the announcement last year, too, from, from WCCC about their partnership with IUP, I think that's a good opportunity um, for folks in Indiana County uh, in terms of paying their tuition and making that a little bit easier for them if they're transitioning from one to the other. Uh, but we've always had good partnerships with some of our educational folks. Um, you know, and ICTC is a great uh, organization, a, a great school to be able to go to, whether you're in high school or, or uh, you know, you're out of school and looking to get some additional training. Um, so they're, they're still doing well with a lot of their programs. And, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, someone who's, Getting into one of those industries, whether that be uh, taking the first steps with health care or, or manufacturing or welding or any of those types of programs, that uh, ICTC is a great uh, resource for Indiana County to have. And you know, we work with their students occasionally as well. And um, you know, we've been, we've been lucky; we've had a pretty good relationship with all the school districts. Um, and you know, we're continuing to work on some of those workforce programs that uh, um, help those high school students get better prepared and. You know, when they graduate, then they can look at going to either ICTC for some additional training or, you know, WCCC or IUP or going right into the workforce. Yeah. Be be really good this year if we could have a few more ribbon-cutting ceremonies than we had last year. Scissors are getting yeah, rusty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if those scissors get too rusty, they can't cut through the ribbon, and we don't want that to happen. No, no, no we want we want to keep doing some, some of those grand openings. So I think we have one coming up here. Uh, later this week, so we're hoping that uh, we'll we'll continue to do that, and we'll have more and more uh, good news to spread. Yeah, what's coming later this week? Uh, new law firm that's opening up. Oh, good, terrific. Yeah, so we're 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 going to be sending out a, a an email about that. Just uh, do a grand opening ribbon cutting. But um, I also want to make sure that I mention that uh, we are doing a virtual couch shopping event for Valentine's Day. So. Um, kind of a QVC style online event for people to get on, look for gifts for either him or her for Valentine's Day. And, and um, you know, we're, we're able to take a few more vendors. We have limited space because we don't want it to go on all night, but um, it's going to be on February the 8th. It'll be free to everybody. It'll be on Facebook. Um, so you'll be able to tune in live and shop for Valentine's Day. But uh, right now we're kind of looking for a couple of more vendors. If you're interested, give us a chamber a call. Very good. Mark Hilliard, Indiana County Chamber of Commerce, thanks so much for spending time with us today. Thanks, Todd. All right, we'll see you. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160. FM and AM 1160. FM and AM 1160.